It seems the mind can be manipulated. But is it truly mind control? Next on Proof, our experts on either side of the issue weigh in on whether mass mind control is an urban legend or an imminent threat. We've just seen possible examples of mind control and heard about the government's attempt to control people. But is this actually mind control, where people act against their own will? Or was it simply just the power of suggestion? Our expert on the side of belief is Dr. Nancy Irwin, psychologist and licensed hypnotherapist. Our expert skeptic is Olympia Lapointe, rocket scientist and author of Answers Unleashed. This is a very real phenomenon. It is not just junk science or a silly parlor trick. The conscious mind, which is where we do critical thinking, or where all our intelligence is, that is only about five to 10% of all our mental capabilities. This means we have 90 to 95% that comes from the subconscious, which is where all behavior comes from. Mind control is a concept that is science fiction. It is a concept of someone else can have a thought and that thought is yours and you don't know it and you go by that thought and like a zombie where you're thinking that thought is yours and you're doing something that you think is right but is really someone else's thought. No, that is completely science fiction. Even Hypnosis doesn't even work that way. When someone is hypnotized, they always have this decision-making process in their brain where they decide, will I still do this? Is this a part of my belief system? I'm not trained in stage hypnosis, but I do know this much about it. They are trained to look at body cues and they know who is more open-minded, who wants to be a big ham on stage. There's a lot of studies right now that want to suggest that mind control could possibly be real. Because if they think that mind control exists, they can actually use it to control brains. And the reality is that you always have the ability to control your own brain through your decision making. The introduction of mind control was through a drug, and it was LSD, and it was a way to have people hallucinate so they would reveal the truth. And uh, the long story short is it wasn't mind control, it was actually an, a substance that was being introduced into altering the way that people were being conscious. Drugs were used and that weakens the brain and the whole neurological system. So the person cannot respond with their own free will, that is taken away from them. There's a phenomenon in psychology called groupthink. Sometimes when people are afraid, there's a lot of fear and there's unknown. This is essentially what happened in Nazi Germany. There was a lot of confusion and they wanted to believe, I'm not sticking up for Hitler, of course. He was, I wouldn't even say a hypnotist, but he was absolutely a master mind controller. When someone is in that fear state, that's actually a natural part of the brain that allows us to be able to survive situations. But in that state, if you decide that you can't handle whatever it is that you're experiencing, you may unconsciously give your decision making to someone else. And in that case, that would be a so-called, someone would think that is mind controlled, and that's not true. In cults, perfect example. When people are very vulnerable and weak and lost, it's easy to give their control, the power of their mind to someone who seemingly has it all together. Charles Manson is another great example. It's not hypnosis, that's mind control. When it all comes down to it, mind control is someone else making decisions for you. And I personally believe that that's not possible because you have the decision to make great choices and, and a life for yourself at any moment in time. Mind control is not respectful of the individual client's wishes. Mind control is what the Nazis used and Jim Jones in um, South America years ago. That comes from bodily deprivation where, and certain police activities have done that way in the past, not today, hopefully. Uh, but it comes from, yeah, uh, denying bodily functions and you, at some point your brain is gonna shut down. If you're not allowed to urinate, you're not allowed to sleep, you're not allowed to eat, at some point your cognitive abilities will be so weak, you will give in and say yes when the answer is really no, for example. 
That's taking away a person's free will. Your brain, per psychology, which is the science of how the brain works and how thoughts work, is that your striatum connects to your prefrontal cortex. Now, let me break that down for you in the terms of a car. Imagine a car. You know how you have like the automatic gears where you're in drive, you're in park, you're in neutral? Where your striatum in your brain is responsible for you being in gear, for you moving towards something. But it, just like uh, you have a car, you need a steering wheel. Your steering wheel is responsible for guiding you in the direction where your life wants to go. Well, in your brain, your prefrontal cortex is your steering wheel. When you're experiencing fear, it's like you driving, but you cannot turn or move your car in a certain direction and go towards where you want, and so you will crash. There's still so much we do not know about the brain, just like the universe. Yeah, we've been to the moon, but there's so much about the universe we do not know. And actually, each one of us, there are, what, 8 billion people on the planet? We all have a brain, and each one is programmed differently. The reason why mind control is not real is because no one can completely originate and mimic and reproduce a thought other than you. So, does mind control exist? Can we really bend someone against their free will? Or is it just us conditioning someone to respond a specific way? And if the government could really affect your free will, would you ever know? Thank <laughs> you.